With this series, we realized that interacting with the Google Drive API is pretty simple. The key thing is that to know which object we should instantiate for a given requirement. In the very first video, we discuss about the primary requirement before using this API. Identifying the appropriate authentication mechanism. So far, we use OAuth which allows applications to interact with the drive on behalf of the user. It means that all the data belonging to the user is accessible to the application. This is definitely useful for a requirement wherein user wish to keep his or her data private and the underlying application gets enough access to work on it. But that's not the end of it. Instead of relying on the users to grant the access, your application may want to have its own private storage. This is particularly useful to ensure data is not scattered all over the place and it is pretty sensitive to the business. To meet such requirement, Google Authentication offers another option, Service Account. Service Account enables exclusive rights to your application wherein users doesn't play any role in authorizing the access. All the operations in Google Drive are performed on behalf of the service account. Also, the quota limits are applicable against the service account. There is one caveat though, service account gets their own private storage which is not accessible or visible in the main drive account. It means that if I upload a file using the service account, it is not directly visible in the main account. To make sure that your main account is able to see the contents, the workaround is that you should create a shared folder in the main account and grant exclusive rights to the service account. But again, that still has one more catch. If you delete a file using the main account, the file is still accessible in the service account. It is not placed in the trash. The reason is that the service account is the actual owner of the file. Now you may be under the impression that once you deleted the file, it is actually releasing the space in the main account, but that's not the reality. In fact, the data is just getting piled up in the service account storage. So be careful. Let's explore the steps to create the service account. Log in to console.developers.google.com and make sure you have selected the right project in the top list. If you are in the dashboard, just like my screen, you should be able to see the credentials link on the left side. Click the link and it will display the list of credentials you have already configured for your project. To create a service account, there are two approaches. Either you can directly choose an option service account key or you can click the help me choose menu item. I will proceed with the service account key option. This will take us to a new screen which will require few inputs from our site. First, select an option new service account from the drop down. Then enter a meaningful name for the service account. The next field requires an appropriate role that you should assign to this user. Note that the service account is also used to interact with the Google Cloud services and hence you are seeing so many roles getting listed. Scroll a little bit and you should be able to see an option storage. Then select the storage admin. For key type, leave the option JSON as selected. We are done with the entering all the required information. Now click the create button to complete the steps. Once the account has been created, a private key will be automatically downloaded to your computer. We will require this private key to interact with the drive. So save it at an appropriate location. I will copy the file to the src main resources secret folder and name this file as service.json. To use this service account, we need few modifications in our code. Well, the modifications primarily include how our credential object is getting constructed. If you notice this code, I have written Google credentials dot from stream followed by a reference to the variable which points to our JSON file. Rest of the steps remain same. 
Then I initialize the key initializer variable, which is pointing to the implementation of common Google client request initializer. Now we need to construct the drive object. The steps are call the builder method on the drive class, pass the transport object followed by JSON factory and a null value. Then invoke the set HTTP request initializer method on that and pass the GC from JSON object that we just created or the Google credential object to this particular method. Then we need to pass the Google client request initializer. Finally, you need to call the build method on it. That's all. You can start using this drive object to perform all the operations that we have seen in the previous video. Just to remind you again, if you execute this operation and you don't see any changes reflected in your main Google account, you have to make use of the shared folder. For G Suite users, there is also another option available. You can provide the domain wide delegation, which will ensure the changes are reflected in your G Suite account. I will leave that as an exercise to you.